those listening and watching me from the Hague, and those watching me from Khartoum, I want to thank you. First, I want to pay my respect to the government of Republic of Sudan. I want to pay my respect to my friends, the generals, the two of them, especially General Daglo. General Daglo, my friend, when I knew you, you were left in the car. I want to make sure that you don't fall into an international trap that will bring us to two tears more than joy. I know very well, very many people in Sudan would like to make, and the world would, would like to take a, a retributive route against President Ali Bashir. Yes, crimes were committed, yes. The Sudanese stood up and went to the streets, demanded the freedom, Bashir surrendered the power. Generals came, swept him out of power. The most important thing today, as we speak, there are so many militias gathering their momentum in Sudan itself. Is it the right time for Sudan, and I'm addressing the Sudanese government directly, especially my friend General Duglo. Remember, the Janjaweed were named as one of the factors that actually brought the chaos in the food. It will not be long before the same court that is smiling at you, before the same chief prosecutor, Karim Khan, who is smiling at you living in Katsenyu Hotel, in the rooms 2040 and 2062, occupying the whole floor. It is not going to be long before he turns on you, General Duklo. I'm addressing you as an African. We are almost the same age. We have been together. We know each other for, from 1990s. I've been a visitor to Khartoum. I have seen so many things across Africa. General Duglo and General Hamid, I just tell you, the same Karim Khan smiling, whom you are welcoming tomorrow will call you. You open up a Pandora box by delivering your former head of state instead of putting him on trial. The Sudanese justice system is enough, is good enough to put somebody on trial. Sudan is a country where the crowd of justice began from. Sudan can try its nation. Sudanese can be tried in Khartoum so that the people of the fool can get better justice, can see the fruits of why justice system is there. Dear generals, my brothers, comrades, the same ICC that you see that affect this case, the same ICC that airlifted the witnesses, procured the witnesses, like they have done in several African cases, will one day come back for you. You have not destroyed the Janjaweed. It is there. It is the militia mission. Who are the commanders? Who are the participants? Think twice before you hand over General Al-Bashir. I have come at this hour to alert you as a brother who has faced International Criminal Court from the first case in Uganda. I therefore speak with authority. I therefore stand with authority 
There is nobody out in South top of the Sahara who will speak with authority on the question of ISIS. There is only one man, and this is the man, Dr. David Matang. I have opposed them. I will oppose them. I will continue to de deny them any chance of taking any African to the Montego Bay of Europe. I will deny them any chance of going out to slaughter Africans, to put them in a keg as if we have no system in Africa that can try us. A court in Khartoum is better than a court in The Hague. Why do I say so? The court in The Hague has no assessor. The court in The Hague has no interpreter. The interpreters are either coached by the same court. The court in The, in the Hague, the prosecutor is the hunter. The hunted continues to prosecute, to investigate, lays the case in the court, seeks a conviction. That is one person. The court in Khartoum allows the police to investigate, brings the corporate evidence against the suspect. But the court in The Hague allows the chief prosecutor to take over all these functions of justice. The people of Sudan should think twice. Yes, I know there are com crimes that were committed. Yes, I know many people die. But let's look at the food today. When we walked in the full iron and the turbo match, flying in the planes, dropping in Khartoum and going to the full, seeking sitting in Nairobi, in Johannesburg, in Khartoum, in Cafe Hotel, making reports to make it the full better, to find a long lasting. I want to take this opportunity to thank President Turbo the African Union envoy on the food. I want to thank President, uh, my good friend, Professor Gambari, the head of the political department of the, the forces that were put there by UNIME, forces that were in Dafu. Professor Gambari, wherever you are, remember what we discussed. What we said, this is the first place in the history of Africa, Professor Gamal, for a country to get freedom. The people of Darfur returned to normality. Darfur itself had returned. There was forgiveness. There was a reconciliation. There was a redemption strategy. The case of Darfur was killed from day one. How was it destroyed from day one? I want my panel to listen to me carefully on this one. When you arrest suspect in all Ocampo's cases on African continent, and I want, want to speak with authority, because there is nobody who is going to say I am wrong. Look at the case of Pierre Bemba. In the Congo Central African case, Mr. Pierre Bemba was indicted and Mr. Bozize was not indicted. My panel, listeners, viewers across the world, the case of Thomas Rubang. Mr. Thomas Rubanga was indicted. None of the commanders of the Congolese army were indicted. My viewers, again, 
The case of Thomas Rubanga should have taken Mr. Kabira. Because Mr. Kabira was the final responsible for international law. The button sticks with the commander in chief. Who was the commander on chief of the Congolese army that was fighting Thomas Rubanga? The case of Quatara of Babugo, Mr. Ocampo should have taken both Quatara and Babugo. Mr. Ocampo came and took Quat uh, Babugo and the left quarter. Mr. Ocampo came, went ahead to indict Babugo's ministers, Babugo's relatives, including the wife. The case of Libya, Mr. Quat Mr. Ocampo indicted Muhammad Gaddafi, Said Gaddafi, and the children and they left the commanders, the terrorists. The terrorists who occupy Libya today were left out. Africans don't want to listen. They don't want to know. But these things are going to come there tomorrow. For those who don't want to know, it's your problem. Didn't I tell you Ethiopia will collapse? It's your problem. Didn't I tell you? Most of you were shouting at me. Some of these Kenyans who have never gone to school, some of them. Idiots coming to insult me. Some have gone to school. Those who have gone to school, not that thing. Kenyans have not gone to school. They have gone to school. But some idiots paid 50 shillings to insult the people. They don't listen. The case of Gaddafi, Mr. Ocampo, indicted one side, left the other side. Let's come to the case of Kenya. Mr. Ocampo came to Kenya, indicted, balanced the, the, the indictments, plucked three from the opposition, three who are close to the commanders in chief. Uru Kenyatta was not a commander in chief. William Ruto was not a commander in chief. These are just people who should not have been indicted in the first place. And I want Kar Karim Khan to tell me, uh, because I'm going to quote all the things that he's saying. We are, <laughs> this is the best moment for me to watch my final retirement. This is the best eating cake that I'm going to eat, Tawish. Because I'm going to reproduce everything Karim Khan said about the ICC, which is now serving and is going to pick Mr. Bashir. I am going to bring it to the world until there is a ceasefire. Because Karim Khan, I put you on notes that I'm going to reveal to the world quite a number of things. And uh, let me see the credibility. The case of Central African Republic, medium the pattern is the same. One side was taken, the other side was not taken. The case therefore, which is very, very, another case, the first case was the Ugandan case. One side was taken, not because they did, the other, the, the other side that was taken did not commit crimes. No. I admit the error committed huge crimes. Huge crimes. Heinous crimes. But equally, RRA was not fighting with water. Or the UPDF was not fighting with water. They were fighting with guns. They were killing people. Ocampo came to Uganda, took one side, left one side. Let's go on. The case of Sudan itself. Bashir and the Janjaweed on one side. 
and Abash. Jema, the Jema that was fighting in the Dafu, in the initial indictments, they never indicted the Jema side. The Jema side was left out. Bashir was taken to the ICC. Bashir and other three people were indicted. They later on came about and said, oh, the Jema general are excused. That's the pattern. There is another case in Africa. And most of these cases in Africa have had these difficulties of indictment. The chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court by day, Louis Moreno Camp, ferried witnesses, was put under pressure by international community NGOs was paid money. I am not going to leave any stone and a turn. I will try to convince the court that money was paid for witnesses to be airlifted to give false testimonies in Cairo in Jamena, in Djibouti, I followed, I investigated, I know how it worked. I therefore put on notice the International Criminal Court. The chief prosecutor can celebrate in Khartoum. I have given you the two sides of how the handing over of a Bashir to the International Criminal Court could bring a disaster for the rest of the Sudanese army generals who took part in the Darfur War. Two, I am a member who sat in 1998 in Rome. On that day in July, seated in the hall, invited by Saint Gideon, having met Pope Paul, who kissed my hand, not the feet. Why today I'm still maybe talking, thank you, Pope Paul is God. But my hand was kissed by Pope Paul because I was seeking peace. I remember President Kisano very well. All of us were seated there when the ICC and the Kofi Annan lulled us into a trap to have the ICC launched in Rome. One of the things that I did not like, which I told President Kisano, and I believe there was a Kenyan by name Twitter Mark, who was working in the United Nations, Kenya's embassy in New York. Mr. Twitter Mark became the permanent secretary of foreign affairs in Kenya. He can tell you this man was there. I was in the hall. I asked one question, and still I will ask this question. The ICC court was created for complementarity. Why did the Africans fall victims to a court of complementarity? Today, the problems that are killing Africa across the globe is haunting the leaders. If you are going to haunt the leaders, 
and you tell President Museveni that if you step down, we shall put you in jail and keg you and take you to the ICC. Will the President Museveni step down? Tawish, the answer is no. If you are telling Zuma, if Zuma captured the power again in South Africa, and I'm telling you, I'm warning the generals in the generals in Khartoum, you are now in power today. You can hand over Bashir, but the brothers prepare for your day to be handed over. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm making some sense here, Miriam. Prepare for your days, General Duklo, to be handed over. General Hamad, my brother Hamad, whom I know very well. General Duklo, you know me. The only thing I've done is I've put on weight. But do you remember when you were left in Adikano? I've been in this conflict before. You are my friend. You also prepare to be handed over when you leave power. Because what you are doing today, you are setting a president. A president where you will be taken. Ramaphosa in South Africa. Today, he's putting Mr. Zuma in jail. Ramaphosa term office of office ends in the is in the second term believe me or not it will not be long before ramaphosa goes back to that same game what are we setting up in africa we are setting up a retributive system that our heads of state should not should be taken away as soon as they step down from power. What do you think the head of state who is currently in the office will do? Do you think he will give up power? I want my panel to look at that. Who will give up power? Who? If you are telling President Museveni that you are going to take him to the ICC, will he give up power? President Museveni, we must set an example to give former leaders, the, pre, the leaders, whether they have committed anything, we should give them their decency. That's the type of politics I practice. Forgiveness. The former leaders, if a leader has stepped down, has accepted, he's gone home, leave him to go home. Why is Egypt today? President Morsi of Egypt arrested Mubarak. No sooner had Mubarak stayed in the prison for a few years than he himself found himself in the same prison. His was even once he was condemned to life actually to be sentenced to death. He went to, to see God, the maker, before Mubarak could see. Mubarak was later on released. Is it? He was released. His cases were over. So you should take examples. Leaders in Africa must begin to think that whatever you are doing today, handing over Bashir, the same ICC will come back to take you. They will sleep in the same hotel in Khartoum, waiting for you to be put on a plane to take you to the head. So do you want your citizen as Africans while the American president, who ordered for the bombing of Libya, who ordered for the bombing of Iraq, who ordered for the bombing of Afghanistan. Today, Miriam, as you look across the board, in Nigeria, 
President Buhari is slaughtering people. Nobody is talking. In Afghanistan, the government, in fact, the president of Afghanistan is about to take a flight and leave Kandahar, Kandahar, Kabul. Kabul is about to leave Kabul city and flee, is fleeing to some place. But do you hear this, my people of the panel? The Taliban are taking over Musharraf, which is the biggest regional city next step to come, Kabul. The Americans have run away. They picked their pajamas, their knickers, and disappeared. They left the Afghanistans bleeding. Why do you want to damage your country like the Sudan? by at this time to uproot a man whom you have already found guilty of several offenses that affect the state of Sudan and take him to be charged, yet you will also be charged. The army in Sudan, which I am appealing to directly as I conclude, I'm appealing directly to the army in Sudan. It is the same army in Sudan that was fighting together with Bashir. My friend, General Duglo, listen to me. You are the head of the Janjaweed militia that fought in Darfur. Mr. Karim Khan should not convince you to hand over your own general. Who was your commander in chief? Because tomorrow they will come for you. General Hammond, because of the civil society of George Soros, funded by George Soros, equipped by George Soros, Bashiru's case was a case of full of corruption where Mr. Ocampo received millions and the millions of United States dollars whose original documents we have. Somebody came and said, I falsified the documents. But I waited for the ICC to say, call me as a whistleblower under the act of the statute of Rome. I am the whistleblower who told the ICC that Ocampo took $17 million from the Jewish organizations to charge Bashir. Ocampo's personal assistant was Fernandez. Trivia Fernandez who became the presiding judge later on promoted who had seven, who had a lot of money on her account she couldn't account for. You can take the documents and call them, but you cannot take the hard disk. Before I came out with this evidence, I'd already collected the hard disks. We wanted to play we want to tell the truth. Was Ocampo, did it Ocampo, has it Ocampo admitted that he, he bribed, he got money and he was betting, gambling the money. Ocampo has told us he's a gambler. He was paid to come to arrest people in Africa. Have we looked at the credibility of the former chief prosecutor? Who were they? My sister, Fatube Suda. I am not going to talk about her because she was under the shadow of a mafia gang organized, arranged by George Soros. 
manipulated, equipped, supplied by George Soros to indict Africans. So I will not attack Fatou Besuda. I will excuse her because she's a lady who deserves a bit of excuse. She later on realized that these cases were not going anywhere. Look at most of the cases of Africa there, as I conclude. Look at the cases of ICC, as I conclude. Which case has gone through? The case of Thomas Rubang. Out of 56 witnesses, no, 526 witnesses, Miriam, only 15 were found credible. The rest were telling lies. The judges, go and read the judgments of these cases. And the court found Lubanga just not almost guilty. Sentenced him to 14 years and he had already done like 10 years. Mr. Thomas Lubanga is already out of jail. Babugo the case, the prosecutor found out that the Bobugo had no case to answer. This case of Bashir will be the same. Because the witnesses were faked. Witnesses were procured. Procurement. Okugura Kununua. They bought witnesses they come and give you dollars and a passport and a nationality and tell you that go and tell lies about Bashir. In Jamena, and I remember the man in Jamena was Idris. Mr. Idris and Mr. Bashir, they never liked each other. If you talk of people, a double standard. Why haven't we taken Mr. Idris? Or why didn't we indict Mr. Idris for supporting the full German rebels? For arming them? The late Idris Dabi was arming the German rebels to kill the full, the Furians and to kill Sudanese. Why haven't we indicted him? My panel, I don't want to give a lot of ammunition. Tomorrow or Monday, I will seek intelligence with the same court that I know very well. I will seek to ask the chief prosecutor to investigate the claims as a whistleblower that I put forward that over $17 million or so or more were paid by American NGOs to fix Mr. Bashir. I blew up that information. I whistleblowed them, delivered them to the court. All what the court came up is to say I was, I was not right. But they never called me. Maybe I'm surprising. They have never called me. Can you can you see that? They went ahead to erase every document. Nobody wanted to touch the case until the chief. The judge, the presiding judge, whom I accused, called me Madame Gumedi, Sylvia Gumedi, Fernandez Gumedi, left the court. Have you seen that? All the people who handled this case resigned. The independent oversight mechanism resigned. The chief registrar resigned. Can you tell me why? 
and then they erased the documents from the main headline. Yet they even communicated it to me in black and white. Can we begin the subject? Yes. You know, God has spared me to, to fight for this freedom. I therefore, Miriam, submit. <laughs>